Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to World at War Comics. My next guest is Mr. Jordan Plosky. He is the co-founder of Zoop and a, another company, too, we could talk about that was sold a little bit earlier as I was looking, man. You're quite the, the innovator, my friend, entrepreneur. I try. I guess I just don't know an anything else other than being a glutton for punishment. So here we are. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that's the best way to work, though, you know? You know, I always say you you trade one stress for another, you know, so if you're going to work for someone else, it's stressful. If you're working for yourself, it's stressful. So either way, you know, you're just trading one stress for the other. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I well, prefer the freedom, though, at least. Yeah. Yeah, for the freedom, right? I mean, being an entrepreneur, having that flexibility um, and then having a drive where you know that the the benefits of that drive are directly affecting you and your partners, right? I mean, that's entrepreneurship, if it can happen, I think is the best route to go. Totally. If it can happen, it if is. It a, happen. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it seems like it's worked out so far uh, with Zoop. I mean, you guys are killing it. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, we're, we're pretty, um, what's the word? I guess transparent now because of this, you know, equity crowdfunding raise that we're doing. So you could see, you know, I mean, like we have some great numbers for a startup, you know, we're really pleased and, and proud of what we've been able to accomplish, you know, over the past less than three years, really, of being live. So exciting stuff. And, uh, you know, hopefully only onward and upward from here. Yeah, it seems like that's where you're going. Maybe before we get into Zoop, though, Jordan, I would love to learn a little bit more about yourself, this passion for comic books. Maybe yeah. we can talk about uh, what was it, Comic Blitz and uh, how you got into that. I mean, you got to be a pretty good big comic fan to be able to get involved in something like that. Well, I'll, I'll, oh, man. There's so many different versions of the story. There's like the super long version. And then, you know, I'll, I'll try to keep it interesting at, at the very least. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that's good. Look, lifelong comics fan, like, you know, in 9091, when, you know, you have your Spider-Man one and X-Force and, and you know, X-Men one being relaunched and then Image Comics and Valiant Comics, like all that. I was the perfect age. Death of Superman, you know, Va uh, Valiant Comics coming out. And I have. My all-time favorite book is The New Warriors. We could talk for an hour about The New Warriors, trust me. Um, but, you know, I was the right age at the right time, that big comic boom, and it got me. And, you know, I dipped out of comics, you know, in, like, high school and college, as most people do. But, you know, then the movie started coming out. Like, X-Men came out and Spider-Man came out. And I felt this feeling of validation. It's like, ha-ha, I was right. You know, like... This thing that everybody thought was nerdy or not cool, all of a sudden, and, you know, look at what's happened with all the movies. So there's this big feeling of validation of being like like a fan that never stopped being a fan. You know, so many people dropped out, dropped off and never got back into it. But um, so just a lifelong comic fan, really. But at the same time, um, huge passion for music and went to college for music business, wound up graduating right as 9-11 happened, so couldn't get a job anywhere. Um, wound up actually getting a job as a drummer, and I, I was a professional musician for about 10 years. Um, and it was really funny because at the same time that I was on the road, sort of like digital comics started happening. So I could read whatever I wanted on my iPad. It was it was like this great thing, you know, for someone who's traveling all the time to have access to all, you know, all these comics I wanted to read was, was outstanding. Um, got married, had a kid. So I got off the road and was realizing like the music industry was a tough business to like actually stay in. And I was like, well, what else, what else is it that I love? What else is it that I'm passionate about? Because I can't just clock into a job and clock out. Like I, I don't have that in me. So refocused to my other passion of comics. And that was kind of the start of comic blitz. Um, actually started doing the market research for that in like 2014. Oh. And I, I think we launched uh, sort of like the first version of that platform in 2015. Uh, so for those who don't know, Comic Blitz was essentially the same model as Comixology Unlimited. So we were uh, just subscription based. So $7.99 a month for all you could read comics. We we never got up to the Marvels and DCs, but we had IDW and Top Cow and, and Aspen and Zenoscope and, and, you know, like a lot of art, like a lot of great content coming our way. Um, and wound up having an exit. So we, we got purchased by a, a a video streaming company that kind of folded the the digital comics offering into their package, like to, to customers. So they were sort of an aggregator of all these different channels of streaming services and stuff. So you could watch this, watch this. Now you could read comics, sort of like the DC Unlimited, you know, platform that kind of came and went too. 
DC was it DC Unlimited? DC, uh, uh, yeah, I think is it Marvel Unlimited and then DC? I, I got them both. I can't remember the difference between the two, but I use them a lot. Yeah, well, the Marvel Unlimited was was strictly comics, but DC had something where it was like all the video content, but you could also read the comics too. Like I even forget what it was called. This is yeah, I don't remember. You know, six years ago or something like that. So I went up selling my company, going to work uh, for the company who bought us. Um, you know, kind of was there for the transition of integrating Comic Blitz into their offering. Wound up getting a job, uh, sort of in like the theme park industry for a little while, but then COVID hit. And everybody was quarantined and, you know, you're stuck in your house and I was losing my mind, you know, just trying to figure out like, all right, how do I stay sane and positive? What do I do? Um, I need a creative outlet. And for some reason, the creative outlet for me was starting another business. And that was, <laughs> you know, Zoop, I like to say is a pandemic baby. Yeah. So, you know, during the pandemic, if you remember, I mean, like this is kind of part of our origin story, which is why it, it's close to my mind but look during the pandemic diamond still had a monopoly mm -hmm. they shut down which meant that no stores were getting new comics you know all the sh most of the stores had to shut down as well at the same time i think it was at&t just bought warner brothers who slashed dc's publishing output by like 25 percent. all this meant fewer opportunities for creators but then on the flip side you see e-commerce exploded like 10 years worth of growth in like five months the same thing can be said for crowdfunding on a, on a much smaller scale, but crowdfunding was this explosion at the moment, right? Because there was no other way for people to get content out there, there or, you know, get their projects out there, make money by creating comics. So I connected with my co-founder in Zoop. His name is Eric Moss. Yeah. He was at IDW for a little while, and he was actually my counterpart at Comic Blitz. He, I would license IDW content from Eric. So. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's how we knew one another. We reconnected over the pandemic and he was talking about potentially like helping people um, consulting on, on their crowdfunding campaigns. So, you know, we started talking about crowdfunding and, and like all the things that we saw that were like really good about it. But then all of all the all the gaps that we saw, all the things that we thought could be better. And instead of, you know, tacking on to Kickstarter, we said, well, why don't we just do it ourselves? And that's, you know, we started putting all, you know, all that together and saying like, all right, well, Kickstarter is cool, but like, it's really hard to figure out, you know, if you've never done a campaign before, how to campaign manage it, how to, you know, if you're not a marketing kind of person, how do you get out there and, and spread the word? You know, if you have to find printers and manufacturers for pins and stickers and buttons and posters and everything like that, you know, and then of course the, the big uh, hurdle for a lot of people in crowdfunding is fulfillment. Yeah. You know, ha having to figure out like, all right, I've got, you know, 500 packages. They're all different, <laughs> you know? This guy's got this one thing. This guy's got six things. And, you know, I have to figure out how to put everything together properly. I have a small house or apartment. You know, I don't I don't have the space for this. I don't have the 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 time, really. You know, I, I'm still have my full time job or I'm still a freelancer or whatever it is. It's like I can't dedicate hours and hours to packaging yeah. things, you know. So we took a look at at the landscape and, and we thought being the full service crowdfunding platform that offered all of those services all under one roof was a time saver was a value add um and that that's really what what the model is for zoop we are a full service crowdfunding platform i mean that's absolutely incredible because that is kind of the gap with all the other crowdfunding platforms is it takes a lot of work right um from i mean you're already stressed out about the marketing side of it getting the word out ensuring that people right you're trying to save emails and you're trying to utilize those every time you do a new kickstarter to try and get those same people to come back so that's a lot of work in and of itself and then you get 100 to 500 people backing and now you got to fulfill so you're sitting in your kitchen with your kids trying to get them yeah it's it's a lot totally. of work, right it is, you know, and I know that people start with the best of intentions, but for the majority of these creators, look, they're writers, they're artists, they're, they're not necessarily looking to handle the tech side of things or the customer support side of things or, you know, even just the, like the packaging of stuff. So, yeah, when we get to take, like I say, all the unsexy stuff off their plate yeah. so that they just focus on the creation, you know, and they still have to promote, they still have to tap into their crowd, like bring their crowd to crowdfunding. But at the same time, when you have support and a partner like Zoop, it just makes it so much easier yeah. as opposed to going it alone on another platform. Yeah. Well, let's walk through what that looks like, Jordan. So 
you know, I'm a comic book creator. I want to crowdfund my next issue. I go to Zoop. I, I figure um, the at least the layout and all the information is going to be very similar to other crowdfunders that you do in order to get your your comic book up onto the system. But as far as the fulfillment, um, say you're going to give cards out or pins or something like that, how does that work? Are you producing that actually for the creators or are they sending some you know, that if, that that stuff to like a warehouse or something? Can you kind of walk us through what that looks like? Yeah, it's a combination of, of both of those things. Um, okay. But then also, we're still very hands-on with every campaign that we do. So wh what I mean by that is we're actually the ones that put the, the campaign page together for you. Oh, okay. Wow. So you, you don't even have to worry about like what that what that layout is going to look like. Damn. And then <laughs> you know, the user interface is slightly different than Kickstarter. You know, with Kickstarter, they use the reward tiers. Yeah. Right? So it's like, hey, for five bucks, you get this. For 10 bucks, you get this and this. Yeah. And so on and so on and so on. Our user interface is more like, I, I would say, an Amazon Prime page where you're like, oh, I want one of those. I'll take one of those. You kind of create your own cart, throw everything in there and check out. So you're not like reading like all these different things and like, what am I buying here? I just want this one thing, but I can't get it because it's part of this, you know, <laughs> bundle or this reward to you with like five other things. So we bypass all of that because A, it takes a lot of time to think about how to like create those, those reward tiers and B it's kind of outdated. You know, when Kickstarter started, it was before everybody was buying literally everything online, yeah. you know, now everybody is educated on how to make purchases online. So our interface really just reflects a more modern time and everybody knows how to, you know, purchase through e-commerce. We do offer bundles, you know, like a, a creator could put like three or four things together for a value add or something like that. That's no problem. Um, and then the other thing is we collect all credit card information and shipping information during the main campaign, mm -hmm. which means that there's no surveys, which everybody really seems to love because when you're trying to track people down, please fill out your survey. I can't, I can't mail you anything. I don't have your address, you know, all, all that stuff. So we just streamline all of that, you know, and, and creators really seem to love it. I think users really seem to like it too, because if you're back in a Kickstarter and you're like, Hey, I'm going to plop down 50 bucks. And then like a few months later, they're like, okay, cool. We're ready to ship, but you owe us another like eight or 10 bucks for shipping. Now you're like, come on, dude, I already paid for this. I know everybody feels the same exact way. So again, we just take care of all of that during the main campaign, streamline the entire process. And everybody really seems to like that. Yeah, yeah, no, it sounds like a definitely a one stop shop for any kind of a creator trying to get their their comic book in the hands of fans, right? Yeah, and then the, the other question that you asked is like, so how does it work with you know producing, uh, mm -hmm. you know whether it's comics or pins or or stickers or a anything else? Um, it it depends. Sometimes I mean, we have vendors for all of that, and we could handle the entire process for people. But you know, if if you were like, hey, I got a pin guy, cool, you can take care of that, and we could just either coordinate or if you want to talk to your pin guy when those pins are produced yes send them to the warehouse our warehouse people will be notified hey keep an eye for a package you know um from tommy it's going to be some pins it's going to be part of this this project this campaign you know we'll assign it a skew it goes on the spreadsheet these guys pack and pick and send everything out you know this is what they do all day every day so it's a third party vendor that we that we use mm -hmm. um but yeah they're top notch so you know, they, they, they don't miss, you know, the, the only problem is you probably know, you know, with, with crowdfunding is like, hey, sometimes things get damaged, in, you know, during transit or get lost during transit. But, you know, we take care of all that, too. So. Yeah, that's incredible. Now, when you look at where Zoop is at compared to when it started, like from year over year growth, are you happy with the, the growth and are more and more people coming to the platform at a rate that you're excited about? Yeah, well, the interesting thing is like we, we've never had a full year of the team being full time on it. You okay. know, we've all always had like other jobs and, and doing other things. Um, you know, our first year was really like a half a year because we launched in June. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we only like ran 11 campaigns the whole year, you know, because oh. we were kind of like figuring it out and still trying to like build up our pipeline of, of you know, creators and, and things yeah. like that. Um, and then we had a boom because, you know, Kickstarter made a couple of poor announcements on their own behalf about like blockchain or uh, I don't even remember like what, what some of the other stuff was. But every time they made an announcement, we got more clients coming our way. So 
I, I always used to say, hey, best best press release we never did. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think it was blockchain. Maybe it was blockchain. Like at the end of 2021, yeah, we made some announcement. And we weren't necessarily um, ready as a um, like a self-service solution just yet. Mm -hmm. But we were like, hey, we know it's not perfect, but here we are. If, if anybody wants to leave and go somewhere else, and we got plenty of people... And the cool thing was a lot of people who came from Kickstarter to Zoop had their best campaigns ever. Yeah. You know, and it, it it really helped prove out the model, you know, in that regard. It's like, hey, yeah, we're a new platform, but, you know, your fans go where you go. That's number one. And number two, you know, we get this question a lot. So I'll just, you know, kind of cut it off before it gets asked. But it's like, you know, Kickstarter has millions of people who are on the platform, but they don't help promote. You know, mm -hmm. unless you like beat the algorithm to get a project we love badge, yeah. that only that's only for 48 hours. You know, we promote the hell out of all of our campaigns throughout the life of the campaign on social media, the visibility on our homepage and our emails. So you're not going it alone just off of like your own, you know, social media, for example. You have someone else who's helping promote. That's who's awesome. actually who's actually invested in in the in the campaign because the better the campaign does, the more money we make too. So <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Now, from a cost perspective of utilizing Zoop, is it much different from a Kickstarter, or a Fund My Comic, or an Indiegogo? Yeah, I mean, so... It is full, it's full service, right? So my assumption is it's going to be a little bit more, but then there's a lot of weight lifted off of you as a creator, right? Totally. And, and you know, the price that we charge, we've never gotten pushback. Everybody seems to think it's really fair. Um, because when you think about, like, the platform fee being 5% across the board, really, no matter where you go... And then the added services on top, we top out at 22%. Okay. Yep. Which, you know, if you're working with a publisher, for example, you're not seeing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that public, you're splitting it 50-50 and that's yeah. after the cost of goods. Like it, it, it's not a, you know, it's yeah. not usually a good deal. So this, this seems to be a very, um, everybody seems to be really happy with paying a little bit extra for all of those services. Absolutely. I mean, you've had some pretty amazing creators move over to Zoop. I was telling you before we hit record, um, I've had David Boer on the show a couple of times and I, I love the guy. And uh, Canto is one of my favorite fantasy comic books, but I know he did. I think you had a Conan um, book that was extremely successful on the platform. Can you yeah. talk about some of the, the talent that's come over to Zoop? You know, the, the, the big one that kind of put us on the map was a, a few years ago, um, an artist named John Paulione passed away. Yeah. Um, and you know, this is a guy that worked for Marvel DC he was part of milestone, um, really regarded by his peers as like a master, you know, you don't hear that phrase thrown around or, or, you know, that title thrown around too much, but people really considered him like a master artist. And he had this one creator owned book that he did that was put out through Wildstorm called the winter men. Mm -hmm. And so when he passed away, his friends got together. This is Bernard Chang, Tommy Lee Edwards. Uh, there's an editor at, uh, was it Wildstorm at the time? Uh, is it IDW now? Scott Dunbeer. And they came to us because they thought crowdfunding was the way to go for an artist edition book, you know, an 11 by 17 oversized book for this. But none of them knew how to crowdfund. They didn't they didn't have the time to, you know, handle the printing and do fulfillment and stuff. So it it, it was a really good fit. Um, and that was kind of a big campaign for us, because not only did you have you know, the name of John Paul Leone, this oversized artist edition, Bernard and Tommy Lee, you know, involved. There were pinups in there from Peach Momoko, from uh, Joe Quesada, Walt Simonson, Kim Jung Ji before he passed away. Talk wow. about a master, you know. Yeah. So but we had some heavy hitters who were involved in this campaign and we were only like months old at the time. So it was really it, it was really cool to be, you know, associated with that along those same lines. Uh, Scott Dunbeer came back uh, with another project after the war in Ukraine broke out. And he's like, I, wa I want to do something. Mm -hmm. And he put together uh, an anthology called Comics for Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, we had hard covers and soft covers. The hard cover had a cover by Alex Ross. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> I, the, the soft That's covers great. were, were Bill Sienkiewicz, Art Adams, Dave Johnson. Wow. You know, um, we had contributions, I think, from, again, Walt Simonson, Joe Jusko, uh, Mark Wade. Kurt Busiek, Matt Wagner, Jill Thompson, uh, Louise Simonson as well. So, I mean, like the list goes on and on. And some of these, some of these people that we've gotten to work with, 
Um, awesome. To your point, yeah, the Conan the Barbarian was also like an oversized artisan edition uh, featuring work from John Buscema, Gil Kane, Barry Windsor Smith. And of course, we did this campaign for the Jack Kirby Museum, which was essentially right. yeah. the very first ever Jack Kirby crowdfunding uh, campaign as well for this uh, newspaper strip that he used to do in the 50s uh, called Sky Masters. So, yeah, I mean, like we've had some pretty like high profile top tier names in this industry you know, associated with Zoop for sure. Yeah, that's absolutely incredible. And I'm sure that helps drive more traffic to the website, right? A hundred percent, man. Yeah. Like, I mean, even if you've never heard of us, you might see something, somebody yeah. talking about like, hey, this Conan artist, you know, edition with like John Buscema, 11 by 17 original art scans. Like that's, you know, that's appealing to a lot of people. hundred percent. Can you kind of talk about your team a little bit? Cause you have a pretty amazing team of uh, co-founders and I assume you're expanding a little bit with all the success that you've had over this last year. Yeah. So uh, there's three co-founders. There's myself, uh, the aforementioned Eric Moss. Um, yeah. our, our third co-founder is our CTO. So he he's responsible for the platform, the technology, the user interface, the payment <laughs> processors, you know, all that stuff. Um, his name is Marvin Oswald. Uh, he, he's a geek, he's a gamer more so than a comics guy, but you know, he, he understands and loves what we're doing. So he, he's on board big time. Um, we do have a head of marketing. Uh, his name is Brett Schenker, uh, who actually runs graphicpolicy.com, which is a website, you know, a comics and, and gaming related website. Um, little known fact, when I started comic blitz in 2014, uh, when I was doing the market research, I kept seeing articles by Brett Schenker. And so I reached out and he was actually my first marketing guy at, over at Comic Blitz as well. So then when, oh, cool. when we when we started up Zoop, he was like my first call to make like, hey, you know, because he, he's he's a big email deliverability guy. And if you know anything about crowdfunding, email is your number one tool. Huge. So, yeah, he's a master at that. I've been throwing around the word master a lot, but he really knows his, his, his craft when it comes to emails and deliverability. Yeah. Um, and finally, the person who set this up, uh, Michael Murphy, he's he's the newest member. Uh, he kind of came in as a business development person, um, but we kind of have him also working on some other things for us that we aren't yet ready to announce. But very soon, uh, I, I think you're, you're going to be hearing about like what's coming up next for Zoop. That's awesome. Well, I mean, the, the easeability of the platform, making things easier for the creator is crucial when it comes to crowdfunding and uh, knowing that you have all these different services to do that. Are you constantly looking at what is the next thing that you could add to that to separate yourself from the rest of the pack? And have you already implemented some of that so far this year? I feel like you know the answer to that, which is like <laughs> why you're leading me in this way. So yes, um, we haven't really announced it yet, but uh -huh. we have what I like to call a V1 um, of our e-commerce marketplace. Essentially, this solves the problem of what happens after a successful crowdfunding campaign. How does a creator continue to sell their books, their their product, whatever it is? It it it's a white glove solution again, where we're going to handle all of the technology, all of the fulfillment, you know, all all of the marketing. We'll handle the financials for you and everything like that, because it really presents the same problem as crowdfunding, except on an ongoing basis, you know. If you wanted to open up a Shopify store, for example, you have to learn, you know, technology and how to how to do that. You have to set it up properly. You have to promote it. Um, and every time you hear it like a ding or a cha-ching, like you have to run to the post office. So, you know, you can do all of that or we'll do it all for you for a cut, you know, of the sales. So that's what's coming next. We have one product that's up there right now. I think we'll have a few more when by the time we make an official announcement. But it's... It, it's a marketplace, meaning you don't have to go to the individual campaign page, you know, to to see, hey, A, is something still available for purchase? And then B, you know, you're only seeing that one thing. So there's going to be some discoverability here. There's going to be, you know, hopefully a lot more people coming to the page. And, and the cool thing is, because it's a marketplace, if you're like, hey, I want this book and this book and this book, again, throw it in your cart. It's all in the same warehouse. So shipping will all be combined, awesome. you know, you it's it's something that hasn't been done yet in the crowdfunding space so we're very excited about that and that that's coming very soon yeah man that sounds amazing because that i think a lot of people that's where they struggle right that that even when they have a successful campaign being able to find their work after that unless they have their own website which is costly 
um, it, it becomes a little bit difficult. So to really keep those fans and to enlarge your audience after your campaign is over is so crucial. Um, because, right, you're, the whole thing you're trying to do is build this audience over time. And uh, if you have something in between campaigns to continue that, um, I, it's just going to make the next campaign even bigger, right? Yeah. And, you know, for us, we see it as such a value add that I think it'll it hopefully will be uh, enticing to creators who haven't yet come over, you know, to bring, hey, I still have, you know, 50 copies of my last campaign or, you know, I'm going to overprint for my next campaign. Cool. Let's 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 go. Come on over, sell your stuff here. And if you like us, then maybe we do your crowdfunding campaigns, too. So that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, Jordan, I mean, that's absolutely incredible. Um, I cannot wait to dig in more on Zoop. Um, like I said, I purchased, um, but, you know, I have my own comic book, too, and I have a lot of uh, people that I interview. So maybe uh, we could <laughs> work something out where we could try it out. I mean, I think it sounds amazing. I will tell you, after fulfilling orders, um, if I could get out of that, yeah, almost any cost, I'd be willing to do that late nights of trying to get that all done while I'm working a day job. Um, it's uh, it's not fun, right? <laughs> At oh, all. <laughs> understood, man. No, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's have let's have that conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and you know, then, as you're looking at the rest of the year, Jordan, are you guys um, going to be at a lot of the cons this year to help, you know, facilitate that that first interaction with Zoop? Like we have C2E2 coming up. We have WonderCon coming up. Like, what does that look like for the year for uh, Zoop? Yeah, I mean, you know, this year, I mean, the thing that we have going on right now um, is our equity crowdfunding round. Yeah. Uh, so we're a crowdfunding platform, but. We, we are legally allowed to only do, you know, sort of product based crowdfunding. So right now on another website called Republic.com, if you go to Republic.com slash Zoop, uh, we are actually doing a capital raise over there. So as opposed to going to VCs and angels, we're tapping into the community. We're tapping into comic fans, uh, people who love the world of crowdfunding to raise money uh, to continue the growth of Zoop. And the cool thing is you don't have to be an accredited investor. You don't have to invest tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, the minimum investment is 150 bucks. And there's some perks, you know, some collectible comics that we're throwing in, depending on how much people invest. Um, so that's that's the big initiative right now. It's going on at the moment. So um, republic.com slash Zoop uh, is one of our big things that we're doing this year. Um, but to your point, yeah, next week I'll be at WonderCon. Uh, I'm a Southern California guy, so that's kind of like the local show here. Yeah. Uh, San Diego we do every year. Uh, New York is another one that we don't miss either. Um, I was at MegaCon earlier this year. That's a good um, so it, it it was big. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a big show. I don't know if I like it too much though. Oh really? It didn't. Yeah. Is it well like San Diego? I get that a lot too from other creators. They love being yeah. there, super crowded. It's just an amazing experience to be there. But because of all the Hollywood stuff going on, it seems like independent creators that that artist alley maybe doesn't get as busy. Although, although I I, I wouldn't want to strike for Hollywood. I'm glad everybody's back to work. But with the right. strike last year at San Diego, it was the best year ever for independent creators because everyone was on the floor. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I feel like everybody really loved last year. So yeah. it, it, it's pretty funny. Um, it no, Me Megacon just felt like unorganized for some reason. There's oh, no really? num like no numbers, you know, no like aisles that you can kind of see. And like n none of the booths had numbers. And it, it felt like, you know, comics were like scattered all around and not like together. Really? I don't know. That's me. I don't want to. I don't. I shouldn't like talk bad about any anybody. I've never there. been. I just seen all the videos and it looks huge. I mean, it, it looks it, gigantic. It's tremendous. I think that they're talking about that they may have overtaken New York as like number two you know, behind San Diego, possibly. I think possibly some something, some crazy stat of like, yeah, there's a hundred plus, hundred thousand plus people yeah. this year. Like it, it's it's nuts. Um, no, but yeah, I love San Diego. Um, it, it was this year. I, I went to eat um, Emerald City last year, so this year was like, do we do Emerald City or do we do MegaCon? I went to MegaCon. Um, but yeah, for right now, it's WonderCon, San Diego, New York, um, and possibly with some of the stuff that we have going on, I'm going to throw in maybe Gen Con, if you're familiar with Gen Con. Oh, what's Gen Con? Gen Con is the San Diego Comic Con for like the gaming industry, not oh. video games, but like board games, tabletop, nice. all that stuff. Yeah. A little Warhammer action maybe happening? 
<laughs> I love Warhammer, so that would be pretty cool. I've never been there, so is that in Southern California? That one's actually in Indianapolis every oh, year. Indianapolis, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome, man. There's there's this huge one in Germany called Essenspiel. Oh, really? That's, that's apparently like the biggest game <laughs> convention in the world. Like they give it that. That's like you know the Eisners are at San Diego. Yeah. These are like the, the toy of the year awards or like the game of the year awards go on at essence. I'm probably saying it's so Americanized. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it's, it's all like, good. But yeah, essence spiel. Um, yeah, but that would be cool. It would be cool to make it over there at some point. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, are we leaving anything else out, Jordan? I'll put, I'll put all the links for uh Republic um, below that way people could go there now, but uh, anything else that we're missing? Um, we, we've got some cool, campaigns that are live now some that are wrapping up i mean we have a campaign from chad harden uh wow. you know who used to do harley quinn a whole bunch on on uh on dc but he's doing a lot of marvel covers and things like that right now too so he's got some sketches and commissions and things that you can get on his campaign that's awesome um, we have some upcoming campaigns from adriana Mello. we just put up her pre-launch page so if you're familiar with her on harley quinn and uh poison ivy and uh, Christian Ward is doing an art book with us. So we're really excited about that. If you don't know, he just did basically DC was like, just do Batman. And he had his own Batman miniseries because he's that awesome. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So we're really excited to be working with, you know, people like that. And there's more coming. Um, so much more behind the scenes that I can't talk about. Oh, yeah. the other one I should I should probably mention is uh, we're working with Vault Comics right now okay. on what what we're calling a crowd building campaign. It's not necessarily about like making money. They're yeah. looking to increase their user, their fan base, their user base. Yeah. So they're giving away, by the way. So if you go zoop.gg slash C slash barbaric, because that's the title that, th that they're releasing. They're yeah. giving away free digital comics. No oh. credit card, no credit card necessary. You know, just come on, click, get your free comic. You can buy other stuff, you know, like sort of like higher reward tiers if you want, but you don't have to. But the more people that come, the more stuff gets unlocked and the more perks and everything that everybody gets. So even if you just come and get like a free comic, if another like 50 people come to break the 300 number, now everybody gets an enamel pin. Now everybody gets, you know, something else sent to them as well. So, you know, it's just spread the word. You know, it's, it's about building a community. So it, it's something unique and interesting that we're kind of capable of doing. You can't kind of can't do over on Kickstarter. So it's a cool, unique partnership. Uh, working with them on that and yeah i don't know, just keep your eyes peeled for more announcements and and you know more projects that are coming on the platform that sounds amazing man i'll definitely um get the word out and see if we can't push some more people over to zoo but everything that you're doing for the comic book community in general through this platform i think is honorable i think uh from an indie independent creator and just being in, within that world of independent creators uh, always looking for ways to build our audience. And it sounds like the services that you supply will allow people to focus on building that audience as opposed to fulfillment and some of the other stuff that kind of drags you down, slows you down from writing, art, all that other good stuff. So um, it sounds incredible. I mean, almost too good to be true. Well, thank you, man. Look, I mean, we have limited bandwidth, so it's not like we could take the amount, the, the volume of projects like a Kickstarter can. So we have to be slightly selective, make sure it's worth your while, make sure it's worth our while. But for the most part, you know, we see submissions and, and we try to accommodate as many as we can. Yeah. Um, one other thing I, I always like to say is, hey, on social media, we're at we are Zoop on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. So check us out there. If you want to submit a project, ask a question, need some help with something, we're hello at wearezoop.com is the email okay. address. Um, please check out republic.com slash zoop and, and uh, own a piece of zoop. <laughs> when you back our campaign, you're not getting you know a product. You are an investor and a part owner in zoop. That's cool, man. That's cool, Jordan. Well, Jordan, I can't tell you how much I appreciate. I hope you could come back on again, especially when all these things start to um, be in a place where you're able to talk about it. I understand that part. So when all these really exciting stuff comes up, we'd love to have you back and update people on everything that you're doing. Happy to. And do, do you interview other creators too? Can I maybe send some creators your way? With? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we've had, yeah. I, I try to do a blend of like, true independent creators and people that have been in the industry. So we've had Todd McFarlane, Jeff Johns, 
like those type. And then we've had amazing creators that are, you know, my level, right? We're just trying to get our, our comic book out there and it's awesome. It's a great blend. And because sure. I have, you know, the McFarlane, it draws people to the channel and then they notice hopefully some of these other creators. And I just had Brian yeah. on yesterday. It's awesome, man. I love it. I get to meet a lot of people like yourself, Jordan, and build a, an awesome network within the uh, independent comic, uh, you know, world that we all live in. Well, look, man, I, I very much appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. And yeah, man, I, I'll, I'll send some creators your way for sure. I love it. I love it. I'm here for it, man. I, I keep everything positive. I just want the comic community to continue to grow. And uh, I, I appreciate that, man. Yeah. That, again, I, and I appreciate you. I appreciate this for sure. Absolutely. Well, Jordan, thank you so much. I will put everything that you mentioned, all the links below to make it super easy. And we'll blast this out on social and, and hopefully, uh, get people more aware of everything that's happening at Zoop. Appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. All right, my friend, have a good one. And it was a pleasure talking to you. Same here, man. Thank All you. Right. Talk soon.